Although they say Arran is quite often Scotland in miniature as they call it, Cowl in this part of Argyll could reasonably be described the same way. We've got sea locks, freshwater locks, rivers, mountains, everything you could think of. A fantastic area that people should really make an effort to get to visit. When I was growing up in East School Bride, my folks had a small holding where we grew lots of different fruits and vegetables and kept some chickens and all that sort of thing, and I think that's where my initial interest in gardening came from. Here we are in the nursery area at Ben Moor, where we're growing on many young plants from around the temperate regions of the world for particular plants that we want to grow, usually for conservation, education purposes and also for research. On the particular day that we got this plant here, we were driving through some forest roads up near the border between Turkey and Georgia, and we spotted these really good coning trees in the distance. Silly or not, but I volunteered to be the one who climbed the tree and get to the top and physically cut off a branch, which I then sent down to one of the other guys on the expedition to get bagged up. When we collect the plant in the wild, we will collect the seed of it. We shall also collect parts of its foliage for herbarium specimens, which will be kept in the herbarium in Edinburgh. And only once it gets to a height somewhat similar to this one, will it be brought over to Ben Moore for planting out into the garden. Here we have a mature specimen of the Norman fir that we saw earlier in the nursery. This one will be approximately 150 feet in height and probably about 140 years old worked at various places before I moved to Edinburgh, to the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh in 1985. After I'd been there for about a year, I moved through here to Ben Moore, partly because I really enjoyed the kind of landscape and the plants that they grow here, but also because the girl who was going to become my wife actually worked at the garden here as well. When the visitor arrives at Ben Moore, one of the most spectacular features of the whole garden will be immediately obvious, and that is the giant Redwood Avenue. This is now celebrating its 150th anniversary this year, being planted in 1863, which is just part of the long history of forward planning and thinking as far as the garden's planting is concerned. It's sobering to think that although this tree is already 150 years old, it is a mere baby compared with some of the, na the native ones in North America, which will grow to 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 years old and be twice the height of this one. I have a picture of my wife sitting on this knoll at the bottom of the tree here from nearly 30 years ago. And when I walk down here today, the tree looks a little different to me, but and we have grown so much older in that case in that l length of time but it will still be here in another 2,000 years' time when we will be long gone. So I work at Ben Moore, but where I actually live is round here in Blairmore on the beautiful shores of Loch Long. From here, you could look up to the rest of the National Park, you can see the mountains of the, of the Cobbler, Ben Narnane, etc. And then you can see how close Glasgow and the Clyde Coast villages are over here, right on the doorstep, really, of the National Park. Both my wife and myself have both been into everything outdoors, a lot of hill walking, etc. And what a great place to live Cowl is for that, because you're so close to so many different hills and it some walks you can go here. But about 11 years ago, uh, my wife was pregnant and we ended up having twin girls, Cleona and Nula. And we're thinking for a while, well, that might be the end of our uh, hill walking. But it wasn't really to be so, because as soon as the kids could walk, we had them in all the local walks, the forestry roads round about here, places like Glen Baranter, Pucks Glen, the Kilman Arboretum, etc. Great area for all that sort of thing. They took it to, like a duck to water, and then by the time they were four years old, 
we thought we'll take them on something a bit bigger, so we decided we'll take them onto the cobbler. And the kids were dead keen, so before we knew it, we were right on top of the cobbler. And we did that, we thought, nothing's holding us back now. So from then, it was straight into them in rows. And after a bit of uh, dedication over under six years, from their very first Munro at four years old, they finished last year at ten years old. Uh, the youngest Scots to have completed all the Munros and they're still the youngest girls to have done so. One of the great things about the garden here at Ben Moore is how the landscape is so obviously contrived with all the exotic species that are here from around the world, but also how natural they seem. If we take, for example, this large Cyanograndi rhododendron behind us here, which is native to southwest China, it just looks as if it belongs here. I, I've been out to where these plants grow and it is almost identical type of landscape. And when the mists, etc., are blowing about Ben Moore, it's raining, you could just be out in its native habitat. Here we are in the Chilean rainforest area of the garden which extends to approximately eight acres, which for many gardens would be the whole garden. For here, it's only a microcosm of the whole place. All the plants grown in here are from Chile. This is the monkey puzzle, and we have grown over 200 mon individual monkey puzzle plants here, all collected in the wild in Chile as a resource in case in the future they're lost through overgrazing, through cutting for commercial purposes, or through natural disasters such as forest fires. We're now in the fernery here at Ben Moore in the Glen Masson area of the garden. The building here was originally put up, I believe, in the 1870s. It was completely renovated uh, over 2008, opened again in September 2009, and we now have over 70 species of ferns within the building from all parts of the globe. Working at the garden means a great deal to me partly because I've invested so much of my life here, being here for almost 30 years. But you can feel a real sense of being part of history. You look back at the planters who put things in in the 1860s, 1870s, right through to today. You feel as if you're leaving a legacy for, for people for the future.